So the first day of public impeachment proceedings took place, and in spite of attempts by Republicans to grandstand, I don't think it went very well for Donald Trump. In fact, I'd argue that it was devastating for Donald Trump. Now, there were hours of hearings to unpack. There's a lot, right? There's a lot of moving parts to this story. But what I want to do is simplify it. Let's reduce this down to just two questions to determine whether or not Donald Trump should be impeached and subsequently removed. One, did he pressure the Ukrainian government to investigate a political opponent, Joe Biden? And two, was there some sort of quid pro quo, implied or otherwise? Meaning, did he say that you know, he would withhold funding. Did he say he wouldn't meet with the president of Ukraine unless they investigated Joe Biden? Now, I believe we got answers to both of those questions. And I think that if you're a reasonable person, you can logically deduce just after today that he's guilty. Now, that's based on what I think. That's not necessarily speaking to legal guilt and legal culpability because the House, of course, has to vote on this, and then we will determine whether or not he'll be removed in the Senate. But for now, getting to that first question, did he or did he not pressure the Ukrainian president uh, to investigate Joe Biden? We got an answer to that that was pretty clear. Last Friday, a member of my staff told me of events that occurred on July 26th. While Ambassador Volker and, I, Volker and I visited the front, this member of my staff accompanied Ambassador Sondland. Ambassador Sondland met with Mr. Yerbach. Following that meeting, in the presence of my staff, at a restaurant, Ambassador Sondland called President Trump and told him of his meetings in Kyiv. The member of my staff could hear President Trump on the phone asking Ambassador Sondland about the investigations. Ambassador Sondland told President Trump the Ukrainians were ready to move forward. Following the call with President Trump, the member of my staff asked Ambassador Sondland what President Trump thought about Ukraine. Ambassador Sondland responded that President Trump cares more about the investigations of Biden, which Giuliani was pressing for. At the time I gave my deposition on October 22nd, I was not aware of this information. I am including it here for completeness. In other words, Rudy Giuliani, at the behest of Trump, pressed a foreign government to investigate a political opponent of Donald Trump. This is obviously incredibly incriminating. Now, this isn't very surprising, but the fact that this came out on day one in testimony, I think that this really speaks to just how brazen Donald Trump is. Like, he doesn't care... I always like to, you know, liken him to the mob bosses in slapstick comedies, you know, Corky Romano, for example, where they're just so stupid and they commit crimes out in the open, not even trying to cover it up. I mean, think about this. He was just investigated with the whole Russiagate situation for two years. And the question was, you know, did you collude with the government to help yourself politically? And he's freed of that. And all of a sudden he does this. He pressures a foreign government to investigate one of his political opponents. Unbelievable. Now, on top of that, going to question number two, because I think that that satisfied question number one uh, pretty sufficiently. We got an answer. Yes, he wanted them to investigate Joe Biden, one of his political opponents. So there's no feigning ignorance here. It's out in the open. Everyone heard Bill Taylor's testimony. Now, moving on to the second question. Did Trump withhold aid until said investigation of Joe and Hunter Biden uh, was completed or executed? Well, we got an answer to that as well. Ambassador Sondland also told me that he now recognized that he had made a mistake by earlier telling Ukrainian officials that only a White House meeting with President Zelensky was dependent on a public announcement of the investigations. In fact, Ambassador Sondland said, everything was dependent on such an announcement, including security assistance. He said that President Trump wanted President Zelensky in a public box by making a public statement about ordering such investigations. Wow. So <laughs> let's just try to step back and digest what's being said here. So there was a quid pro quo, but Ambassador Sondland didn't even know the full scope of it. He just thought that Trump 
wouldn't agree to meet with the president of Ukraine unless he agreed to investigate one of his political opponents. But it went deeper than that. Trump was withholding aid that was already appropriated by Congress. And he said, you're not getting this unless you investigate my political opponent. Now, we don't necessarily know the extent to which that was stipulated. Maybe it wasn't an implied quid pro quo. But regardless, I mean... You, you don't have to be a genius or a legal expert to acknowledge this is clearly illegal. If you or I did this, we would be locked in prison already. There wouldn't even be a question. But because Donald Trump is a person in power, well, there is a question. And as Stand Up America put it in a tweet, this testimony tells us we know Trump used military aid to bribe Ukraine to interfere in 2020. We know anyone else who did that would be in jail. What we don't know is if there's a single Republican in Congress who will uphold their oath to defend our Constitution. And that's just it. This testimony confirms that Donald Trump did, in fact, commit a crime. And the answer to both of those questions that we started this segment out with is yes. It's an unequivocal Yes, it's just a matter of, will he actually be prosecuted for the crime that he's committed? Not only should he be uh, impeached, but he should actually be removed as well. It's just a matter of, will Republicans actually do it? I'd argue no, but, you know, they're going to try to downplay the revelations of these testimonies, but they know that the writing is on the wall and this doesn't look very good for Donald Trump or any of his defenders. And according to Bloomberg reporter Sahil Kapur, well, at least one Republican operative is aware of this. He tweets, just got this message from a Republican operative. Not from me, but this is a massive fucking shit show. No one wants to be here. So, I mean, I think that it's, it's pretty obvious Donald Trump is guilty. The question is, will Republicans let Donald Trump get away with something that they would never let Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton get away with? We'll wait and see, but if I had to guess, I'd say um, Donald Trump will probably get away with this. I think the House will most likely vote to impeach. The Senate probably won't vote to convict him. Now, you can argue that, you know, this isn't the biggest crime that Donald Trump committed. There are more serious impeachable offenses, such as the hush money payments, conflicts of interest, obstruction of justice, or, you know, violations of the emoluments clause. There are bigger issues, and I'd probably agree with you if you made that argument. But what we know with regard to the Ukrainian phone call is that what Donald Trump did here, this is a crime, and it's unquestionably impeachable. It's just a matter of, Will he actually be punished for committing a crime? And uh, that's what we will uh, have to wait and see. But uh, this is devastating to Donald Trump. The Humanist Report is fake news. Mike only cares about Crazy Bernie and his wacky socialist ideas. Sad, very sad. I'm unsubscribing.